Uh, first of all, Trunk or Treat is today at 4 o'clock, so um, that's from 4 to 6, and it'll be out here in the parking lot, so uh, please come uh, dressed for some fun. There is a Reformation dinner today at 12.15, immediately after worship, so please stick around and join us for a meal. And also, our Sunday School kids have been learning about the Reformation this past month, and so there's a little table out there, yep, still there, with some, uh, some of the projects they've been doing, and they made bookmarks for everyone, so please go over there and grab a bookmark. They're for the congregation. One other thing is that uh, we are going to have cottage meetings the week of November 5th through the 13th. And a cottage meeting is basically a small group opportunity uh, to have conversation and uh, dialogue at people's homes. There will be two of them here at the church. The sign-up table is right as you go out. It'll be to your right. Um, there is a table that you can sign up for a day. We tried to find homes that pretty much covered different areas of Springfield, so you can see, and, and uh, 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 Nixa, <laughs> learning the names of towns, Nixa, um, so you can see if there's one near you at a time that would work. And these meetings, like I said, it was, it's an opportunity for some dialogue about, uh, first of all, who, who are we now, our identity as Messiah Lutheran now, and then what kind of pastoral leadership would fit that? And so there's some uh, conversation starting questions to guide that conversation, and I hope that you can participate in that because our call committee will base a lot of their discernment on what you say at those meetings. So, uh, very important. And, David, there you are. <laughs> One more announcement. My name is David Seward. And I'm here in two capacities. One is I'm part of the Springfield Mid-America Singers. There is a concert this afternoon at Immaculate Conception Church, which is at the corner of Primrose and Fremont at 3 p.m. It is uh, a free concert. It will be conducted by a guest conductor, Z. Randall Stroop. He made his first composition when he was at the age of Ten. He's from Colorado, currently is employed at Oklahoma State University, and he was a wonder to behold, I'm telling you. This is our 50th anniversary season. We are singing on this first concert all of the compositions that we're singing are by Z. Randall Stroop, and it's very unusual to be able to have the composer tell you how to sing the stinking song, okay? <laughs> it's pretty amazing. There's uh, Lamentations of Jeremiah. There is uh, the Conversion of Saul. So come listen. Free concert, 3 o'clock, Immaculate Conception, Primrose, and Fremont. Secondly, I am part of the 2017 Nominating Committee. Now that means that we're looking for people to serve on the church council for the year uh, beginning 2018, all right? So if you have a pressing need to serve on the council, we need your input because there's lots of decisions coming up. Pastor, youth leader, all kinds of different things that we need to be pointed in the right direction, okay? Uh, secondly, there are openings for the Synod Assembly, which is June 7 through 9 in Linz, Borg, Kansas. 
So if you want to go to Lindsborg, Kansas, then you can go ahead and do that. But that's fun there in Lindsborg. Okay? Big deal. Anyway. And the third thing we're looking for is a group, two of the church, on, offgoing church council members are on the 2018 nominating committee for the 2019 candidates. We want to begin that in January. So we have four openings on that nominating committee. Let me know or one of these people. Ed Donnell, Josh Dimmick, Margaret Shelton, Nadine Melgren, or Bonnie Pettit. Okay, thank you for your time. Okay, so today will go a little differently than a lot of um, 11 o'clock worship services because we are remembering the 500th anniversary of the Reformation today. Reformation is actually recognized on October 31st, and that is the day that Martin Luther nailed his 95 thesis to the church door in Wittenberg, Germany in 1517, so 500 years ago. And today we're going to recognize five of the great doctrines of the Reformation called the solas, and these are will be uh, described, and then you'll respond with scripture, and then we'll have a song that goes along with one of the solas. And I'll just read a little more that I want to say about that. The reforms that took place, um, that the reformers, so Martin Luther is one that um, we as Lutherans uh, recognized the most. Uh, there were a few contemporaries of his uh, that basically most of the Protestants denominations can find some linkage uh, in the family tree back to uh, Zwingli and Kelvin. And so uh, our neighbors of the Reformed traditions, uh, for instance, uh, Presbyterians, Episcopalians, Reformed Church of America, um, they are they're uh, tracing back to Calvin. Uh, Zwingli uh, kind of had Calvin, Luther, all sort of kind of had influences in the traditions that um, today we would recognize as United Methodist and uh, uh, Anglican. Let's see, United Methodists came out of Anglican. Uh, Pentecostals came out of United Methodist. So, I mean, you can, you can trace it all back to uh, some of the main reformers covering most of Western Europe. And these reformers, they were not co only concerned about doctrine, but they were really concerned about reforming worship. The reforms included centering the role of Christ as the sole mediator for us, services in the language of the people instead of just in Latin, which has been reformed in, in um, all denominations now. Simplified and more understandable order of service. Lifting up the place of preaching to share practical messages for daily guidance. Hopefully you get that most of the time. And the participation of the people in worship, especially congregational singing. And um, why we have the liturgy, it's called the work of the people. So anytime that we're doing any sort of responsive thing, that's actually liturgy. So anything that would include you, the singing, all of that. We pray that today's worship will be a blessing to you and that uh, we give glory to God. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This time, I believe we have up on the slides the confession and absolution. I invite you to please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Take a moment of silent reflection.
Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ has given, was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, may the peace of Christ be with you all. I invite you to take the time to share the peace, and then we all have a song. You are welcome to be seated for our opening anthem.
The love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I'm going to have you sit, and we're going to do a version of the Mighty Fortress is our God, which is a hymn that Martin Luther wrote, and it's based on Psalm uh, Psalm 46, and so there'll be a part where I read, and then you'll respond. I hope that's in a slide. (laughs) It should be. And then we'll sing a verse that'll all be on the slides. And then read, you respond, and a verse. So that's how it's going to go. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. nations are in an uproar, the kingdoms totter, God speaks, and earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. God makes wars cease to the end of the earth. God breaks the bow, shatters the spear, and burns the shields with fire. the Lord is God. God is exalted among the nations. God is exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we pray for your holy Christian church. Fill it with all truth and peace. Where it is corrupt, purify it. Where it is in error, direct it. Where in anything it is amiss, reform it. Where it is right, strengthen it. Where it is in need, provide for it. Where it is divided, reunite it. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. alone, sola scriptura. Here's what it means. The Bible is our ultimate authority for understanding God, salvation, and how we are to live our lives. All matters of theology and doctrine are to find their source in scripture. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope.
Since there's five of these and they all have songs with them, I'm going to invite you to please be seated through this. So the second doctrine of sola is sola Christus, through Christ alone. God has given us the ultimate revelation of God's self to us by sending Jesus Christ. Only through God's gracious self-revelation in Jesus do we come to the saving and transforming knowledge of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth.
sola gratia, by grace alone. Salvation cannot be obtained through human effort. It is only by the unmerited grace of God that we have a means of forgiveness and justification to restore our relationship with God. Truly, then, we are saved by grace alone, without works or other merit. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast.
sola fide, by faith alone. Justification is the act of God by which God declares sinners to be righteous because of Christ alone, by grace alone, through faith alone. We respond to God's grace in us, we respond to God's gracious salvation through personal trust in the Redeemer, not by our works, but rather by faith in Christ's provision on our behalf. Do we enter into the blessing of eternal life? Yet we know that a person is justified not by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. And we have come to believe in Christ Jesus, so that we might be justified by faith in Christ, and not by doing the works of the law, because no one will be justified by the works of the law. Sola Deo Gloria, glory to God alone. To God alone be the glory. All things, including the justification of sinners and the lives of believers, are created for the purpose 
of bringing glory to God. God has created, has created and redeemed us in order to display the glory of God's majesty and mercy, the wonders of God's greatness and grace. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we, we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Please stand and join me in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we, for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. We are open to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and we pray for the church and world and all creation. We pray for the unity of the church. Free us to be Christ's one body, graciously receiving his life and boldly offering it to a world in need. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the renewal of creation, for a shared plentiful harvest for lands unable to bear fruit, for what is neglected or destroyed by our hand, and for the earth's advocates. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all nations of the world, for leaders of villages, cities, states, and nations, for lawmakers and judges, for teachers and students, and for all who work for peace. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who seek refuge and strength, refugees, the imprisoned, and those bound by addiction or burdened by guilt. We pray for the ill or injured. We especially pray this week for Jim Dahl, Charlie Dahl, Barbara Schneider, and Wayne Biggs. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for continued reformation in this and every assembly. In new beginnings, impart wisdom. In established traditions, inspire creativity. In all ministries, revive our hope in the one who makes all things new. Lord, in your mercy. And we give thanks for your saints. United with them in the covenant of baptism, increase our faith in the promised life of all. Lord, in your mercy. And into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting the power of Christ and the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we'll have an offering.
invite you to please stand. God of life, you give us these gifts of the earth, these resources of our life and our labor. Take them offered in great thanksgiving and use them to set the table that will heal the whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and light. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Whenever we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, we do so remembering that Christ died, Christ risen, and Christ shall come again. Lord, remember us as we pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours forever. Amen. You may be seated. The meal is prepared and all are welcome to receive this meal of forgiveness. Uh, you can come forward and uh, stand or kneel along the railing. You'll receive the bread and then either red dark liquid, which is wine, or the light liquid, which is grape juice, and there are gluten-free elements available. Come let us eat.
I invite you to stand and receive the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And now I want to share a benediction. This is a blessing to go out in your lives. It's, a, it's found in pretty much all of our Lutheran worship books throughout the years, uh, and it is a really great prayer for any time of discernment or new beginnings or closings or just life in general. Oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.